R&M Spelts Farms coming at you today um, with kind of a, a neat project that we did. It's going to be time-lapsed, folks. Uh, I understand that you're, what you're going to be watching here is one of my farm hands. She's been a dedicated worker for us now for I think three years. She's she's in need of a new chicken coop on her own um, homestead. So, um, you know, we got a lot of scrap lumber from building barns and stuff and even some steel. And, you know, I've got an extra uh, panel laying around for solar and stuff. And Offered to her folks to let her build it in the cold in uh, one of my barns and I'd help her through it. It's a great learning experience for kids having them build something. Um, you know, a 16 year old like this, she's got keys to the car, so to speak. And, uh, you know, she, she's got the ability, um, I guarantee it. Um, and I just, um, I think it's, it's really good to, to let your kids get on the power tools. Sure, you got to supervise them, make it safe, but they need to understand what a square and a level is. You need to understand how to stud out a wall and stand it upright. You need to understand the staple guns, the leg screws, um, the 90 brackets. And that's what we're doing here. So we're going to build this chicken coop, and we're going to build it tall enough um, and the right angle for a solar panel on top and an actual human-sized door. Um, the previous coop she had is housing, I think, five or six full-size chickens. And literally, you know, they're fine, but they're made for, you know, in somebody's backyard with one or two birds and... That's about it. And, and you know, when you got a farmhand who's real active in 4-H and um, their family can use the eggs, you know, getting it up into that, you know, five to 10 bird size, having it insulated so you don't have to try to, you know, deal with the cold and the frozen combs as badly in Minnesota, um, certainly, certainly a blessing. The other thing, um, as you can see in watching this video, is some of the wood is really warped, really, really crooked. Remember, again, I save this stuff from when we do buildings. Wood dries out, it warps. It comes warped and the builders don't use it. But gosh, if it's over two feet long, I hate throwing it in dumpsters. So I save all the plywood sheeting pieces. I save all the two by fours. I take apart the pallets that they've got, you know, before it goes into the dumpster. And, you know, doing, doing this on the farm has collected a fair amount of wood. So we decided to build out of that wood. And again, some of it's not straight. So you'll see us here trying to you know, put the double headers up and put the walls in and, and we're kind of torquing and twisting some things to get them straight and as best we can. And, you know, I started this project on the ground, um, but again, we have to trailer this about maybe two, three miles down the road to another homestead and get it placed. So we're going to probably set it up for the skid steer to be able to do that. I've got it on green treated six by sixes and, uh, you know, I've got leg bolts in the bottom with big eye bolts so that we can slide this thing around and hopefully get it picked up and get it moved. If you were to build this in today's market with the cost of lumber, you're probably over two grand. But throw that aside from, you know, ticking off the woods people in the lumber industry, both in Canada and the United States, um, probably in a more regular year, if it ever does come back to that, this would be about a $1,500 project to build this the way we're building it. Um, we're studying it all out in two by four walls. We're going to put um, a three inch insulation in there, um, a foam board, and then um, we're going to do plywood sheeting on the inside and steel on the outside. And then again, um, with a solar panel on top, um, and that's just, you know, kind of a kit version. Um, and then charging, uh, say, like a 150 amp battery um, inside, we should be able to run, you know, 225 watt halogen light bulbs for uh, three to five days in the winter, probably continuously. And again, we're using halogens, not LEDs, because we want that heat. Um, I want the heat that the uh, inverter puts out, and I want the heat the light puts out for when she needs it in the deep cold in Minnesota. She's doing a great job here framing up. You're going to see um, a lot of video uh, without me in it, and that's perfectly fine, folks. Um, Sometimes you'll see one of my other farmhands in it too. I, I turned her loose a lot. I, I, I told her how to put the blocking in, how to cut things, um, how to get things marked. And, you know, we, we gave her a third hand tool belt there for, you know, the day or two that she's out here working on the wood part and just kind of let her go at it. I would say personally, there's one, two, three, four, five, at least five days in this and they're eight to 10 hour days. And I would say, you know, five days, eight hours, 40 hours, but I'd say half that time was with another person. So there's probably 60 to 70 hours to build a structure like this. 
So if, if, if people think they can do this on a weekend, get a couple more people. <laughs> That's my suggestion. Um, as you can see, we still need to put the roof structure on this thing. And we ran out of lumber, so we're going to go back up top in the lofts and bring in some more lumber. You can also see we're putting in the floor. Now the floor went in quite well, and then we realized that because we're using 2 by 10s in cedar from a leftover deck project that we need a little bit more support, so I ended up putting a beam in the middle um, to strengthen these. I put a 6 by 6 across the middle. This I don't know if you'll be able to see that real well, but um, the floor did go in. As far as making this thing last, the one thing I've learned is that plywood floors and chickens don't work. Um, I like bigger, stronger, either green-treated 2x10s or cedar 2x10s, and then I like to watertight it. That's my choice of paint in a chicken coop. It is a whitewash paint. It's made for, I think, up to 10 PSI water pressure in basements. I put two coats of that on. Um, and then if we want to make it a gloss, we'll put a glossy Rust-Oleum over the top of it. But that paint has worked fantastic. Now, before you go off about the smell and the toxicity of that, I get it. I'm, an, I'm a natural person too, trying to build a self-sustainable farm and homestead here. But sometimes you got to use the chemicals. Put the face mask on if you need to, folks, and paint it in. Works really great. So here we are just trying to frame up for what will be the future door. You see I'm trying to push and put braces in. <laughs> Darn thing's just crooked, is the best I can say. Um, get some help from my friends here and get the thing done a little bit. You can see now we've got three of us on it. So we're trying to get it done. I would say probably the, the neatest thing about doing a project like this is, you know, obviously those four or five minutes that you get each time you complete something and you see a smile on the kid's face that they did it. Um, but another satisfaction is, is to know that, you know what, they're learning and they're growing. And that someday, maybe when they have a house, maybe when they need a shed, um, that they'll have the ability to do it, do it with more confidence. Um, this world is all about, you know, gimme, 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 selfish, selfish, selfish. I don't believe in that. Um, I like what Mike Rowe says, uh, you know, with the Dirty Jobs group, you know, get out and work, get it done. So here we are, we're getting the last of the roof piece on. I am going to use hurricane anchors. I don't want the solar panel blowing off with the roof. So we're just framing it up. We're going to lift it up there. Um, we're going to get it hurricaned on. And uh, once we get that done, we're going to turn to insulation. You can see there's Oh, I think there's five or six panels there of insulation. We're going to put all that inside in a minute. Chickens create a lot of moisture in a coop, so you're welcome to use fiberglass insulation with plastic. I found foam works best for retarding any mildew or mold for their high moisture content that they put out. This coop is oh, about five feet um, by six, six and a half, somewhere in there. And it should be good for easily 12 birds. 15 might be pushing it. Um, full size height will give them a little bit more ventilation. We will have a vent to put in it. We're going to put a PVC vent in it. We're going to take the uh, external run that she already has, put it up on green treated boards and attach it to this with a chicken door. You can see I've kind of framed in the chicken door in the bottom. Now we're sheeting it with plywood. Actually, OSB, excuse me. Um, plywood's gotten awfully expensive, and I've got leftover OSB. So two of the walls are going to be done in like half inch, and the ceiling's going to be three-quarter. And um, That's just the way it is because that's the scraps I have. Nobody will notice once we whitewash it all up. My farm hand there and one of my daughters is coming in. They're going to help us foam this thing up pretty quick. This structure weighs a lot, folks. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but doing my math on how many 2x4s we used, the weight of the 6x6s, 
and the number of panels that we used for plywood, I'm guessing the structure's about a ton. It's pretty heavy. But out here in Minnesota on the homesteads, we get, you know, 50 to 70 mile an hour winds, especially coming across the fields and the lakes. So we will put this in with um, probably the 36 inch um, bull anchors into the ground with concrete. And then we'll tie it to all four eyes just to make sure it stays in place. And of course, we'll set it on, on pavers so that it doesn't just sit right on the ground. We're just closing off the inside here. I've got a greenhouse that I'm going to put together this year, too. Um, I'm going to have um, one of my neighboring farms in Grantsburg quick frame it up, and then um, I'm going to take his, if you want to call it framed up lean, and turn that into a specialized greenhouse. As you've seen on our channel before, we do have a greenhouse. It works awesome. It's fantastic. Um, I love it. But last August, the farm got hit by a, a small tornado. It really kind of plowed into my neighbors more than me, but it damaged the greenhouse severely. And I've finally been able to settle with State Farm and receive a check to build a new one. But this time I'm not going to build, um, you know, aluminum structure with just plastic walls all the way around it. Um, the north walls on my farm where the greenhouse is um, do not get any sun. Um, the east and the west walls bring in very little sun. And all they do is lose heat out of those walls. So those are going to be insulated walls. And I'm going to make a great big south-facing wall. And I'm going to bring all the heat in through the south-facing wall. I'm going to make sure the roof's insulated. And I'm going to try and retain more heat in the winter. Um, and I think it's going to work out really good. So that's another upcoming project you guys are going to see. You can see my farm hands here. Um, they're working as a team to insulate this building. You'll see as they come around on the side that the foam goes in pretty good. Now there's always gaps in foam. I'm just going to use a couple cans of great stuff. Um, you know, really, when you look at my expenditures on this product project, I had to buy an extra white piece of steel for the roof that we didn't have. Um, I had to buy some great stuff, foam. Uh, the, the parents of my farm hands supplied the battery and the inverter for the solar panel that I had laying around. And, um, you know, screws, um, some coke. Um, we bought, I think, a couple nesting boxes at Fleet Farm for a um, couple light bulbs. Um, I'm probably into this project for only a couple hundred bucks. And you know, the nice thing is, I probably cleaned out maybe 30 square feet of, you know, what I call above a shop space of wood and stuff like that. Um, it just, it was fantastic. Um, I've got more room to put stuff back up there. Actually, even for just good wood and stuff when I have it. It's nice to be able to have that space back. As you can see, they're just pushing in the foam. Uh, some people glue this stuff into the plywood. I'm not, in case we ever need to take it apart. It shoves in pretty tight, folks. And with the steel, it's not coming out anyways. It's, it's hard to tell from, from this camera angle, but you'll see on one of the other cameras that I show in just a little bit here, the door at this point is in place. Um, we've got to make the tracks and stuff for the chicken door. Um, but the door is on the opposite side that you can't see from this camera angle. Once we get it to this point, I don't have the steel on it. I made the decision that I was going to put it on the flatbed trailer because I could pick it up easier with the skid without damaging the steel and then only have to pick it off the trailer one time to worry about damaging the steel. So once we get it to this point, we're going to kind of clean it up. We're going to stick it on a trailer um, and then we're going to go from there. We did not have quite enough foam to foam the ceiling, so I did use a bad insulation on the ceiling. My wife here, she's going to pick this structure up and we're going to put her in place and then we're going to basically get the flatbed trailer in here, clean things up, get the wood off the trailer, and then we're going to back up here and stick it on there.
And once we get this on here, um, we're going to leave it on the trailer and finish it on the trailer. So um, just get this in place so it's parked in a good spot for us. I realize at this point I have to switch camera angles for you as we start the steal. Because again, it's it's going to be difficult to, to shoot it. This camera doesn't go any higher in this position it's at. It's, it's more of a security camera on this side. So unfortunately I can't show you the roof on this view. But um, we're stealing it up. Um, steel goes on pretty, pretty good. I, I use a nibbler, air tool nibbler. Um, got her to use it a lot. I think she really enjoyed doing that. Um, the whole process of cutting and bending steel to make fit um, went well. As you can see here, we're getting it all on. Got to get around that chicken door down at the bottom, get that cut out. She's not scared of heights. She's up and down on ladders on a four-foot trailer. Now figuring out how to do the, you know, J channel and stuff um, is always a little tricky. And since I didn't have a lot of J channel left, I made sure that I did that just so we didn't screw that up. Because sometimes in the process of learning, you have to make mistakes. They were a cut panel or two the wrong size. We cut some two by fours the wrong size. Um, that sometimes is life, folks, when you're when you're learning to do a project like this. It's it's not that we really wanted to, um, but again, you have to have to bounce back from those things and see if you can get it get it fixed. One of the things that I found um, really interesting about doing a project like this when you're involved so much um, with a farmhand on a daily basis, just working with them. A lot of times it's all about, you know, giving orders, sending them off, and then coming back and seeing what they've done, and making sure it's up to snuff. But when you work on a project like this with somebody, you really get um, the ability to get to know them more. Well, you know, when you're spending, you know, 50, 60 hours with them total, you know, other conversations come up, and I, I think I think that's um, a fantastic thing. So I, you know, highly recommend that doing sometimes projects with your kids um, or your hired help on the farm is a good thing. You can see there off to the left, that is the solar panel we're going to use. You can see on the trailer we've got some concrete there and those earth anchors. Pretty much we're going to get that stuff installed here in a few minutes. We're just trying to kind of clean up and get things where we need them. That wood on the back of the trailer right now, she's taken off. She's putting together on the floor. That's going to be the base of the run. And uh, you'll see that kind of in the final shot. But um, we're going to lift the chickens off the ground a little bit and give them a safe run because out here we've got, you know, basically ferrets, weasels, whatever you want to call them. They come in and they wreak havoc. we got some possum out by us. Um, she's lost birds before to it, so have us. Don't need to lose birds to those little devils. They can be a real nightmare. So um, by giving them an enclosed structure that we can have green treated, that we can throw grass and food and stuff on is much better than doing it any other way. Um, this is the inside. If you're wondering what it looks like um, before it gets whitewashed, um, this is a shot of the door. When we stuck it in, that camera shot you can't see. This is the track when I put the track in for the chicken door. Um, just two pieces of, of uh, steel on a uh, green treat. We did put a shelf up there for the solar. And like I said, we had one nesting box, bought a couple more at Fleet Farm. And then uh, had her whitewash this thing with the watertight uh, basement, you know, hydraulic paint, you know, which is supposed to repel 10 PSI of water. It's fantastic paint. I know it's uh, smelly. Um, then we did a proof of concept with our lighting. Took basically a light and a switch, hooked it up to the inverter, inverted to the battery, made sure it lights up, and then basically the solar panel is going to charge that battery. Wired it up, um, UV wiring so the birds can't get, get at it so easily. Inverter's in place, um, battery's in place. Uh, we'll put the optimizer and the solar panel up, and uh, it'll, it'll charge this thing right up. Again, my farmhand's in your paint and second coat with my daughter, and then we're all done. 
Inside's looking good. Got two roost bars. And uh, next up is uh, is uh, solar panel stuff. You know what I mean? As far as putting up the solar panels, I'd love to tell you it's a piece of cake. Um, but you can see me down below there. I'm just wearing up the optimizer and putting it on. And then um, it was a matter of just setting it in place and getting it screwed in. Um, it took us a little bit of work, but we got it up there. The solar panel does need to be um, attached into the framing um, so it can't ever blow off. Um, and we chose to leave that one roof panel off until we got the solar panel in place. The roof has a fairly, I would say, steep pitch to it, but that is the pitch the manufacturer recommends for the solar panel. So that's why. Once the solar panel's in place, um, we still need to trim out all four corners of the barn and the roof and finish the roof panel there. Putting on the trim, the gable trim and stuff, um, yeah, obviously you don't have to do that, folks, but I really wanted my farmhand's building to look nice. And I guess I probably did that more for the parents than for her. Um, you know, because it's built at my place, I just wanted to look good. Maybe it's a prideful thing, um, so you can nibble off a little extra steel and uh, we'll get the, the edging on the roof on and finish the side steel. And then we're uh, pretty much to be done with this. There isn't much wood left over. That wood there on the trailer is all the extra scrap that we had left. The foam there behind the glass door, as you can see looking through the glass door. Oh, the glass door. Go to Menards. Go to their back aisle. Look for scratch and dent. Look for stuff that's out of place. This is a $235 door. I went back there, and somebody had damaged the uh, frame around this door. Maybe a forklift or whatever. It's broken up really badly. Matter of fact, when I asked the guy about it, um, he told me he wasn't sure the door would shut against it quite right. That's perfect for a chicken coop. Um, he had $75 on it, I offered him 50 cash, and he gave me the door. Um, her folks went and bought me a nice, you know, quick set lock set, um, which we put in it. Sweet. Done. I mean, what more can you say? $50 door. Um, I shimmed it up the best I could. I replaced some of the framing edging on it. Should work great for years. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a good structure, I hope. I hope this thing is going to last for a while. I hope. Um, we'll, we'll see with time, obviously, but I'm real hopeful it will. So at this point, we're getting kind of the end, folks. There's not a lot left on this chicken coop. Um, we're going to put the vent in on this side. We're going to finish this last piece of steel. And once we get, um, you know, the, the bottom edging on and the steel up, oh, um, a lot of people build these things and they don't put bottom edging on. If you do that... You'll get mice that'll go up those little holes in between that steel, and they'll go nest in your foam or your insulation. So put your bottom trim on. Um, it really stops that quite well. But we're going to put this last piece of steel on, and once we get this piece of steel on, we're going to punch a hole for the solar to go into the inside and silicone that, and then we're also going to punch a vent in. And we're going to do a PVC vent, and we're going to put a, a B screen on it. I'm going to angle it on the downward so rain can't get in it. I'm going to do a natural draft kind of thing. Because there's a chicken door already, um, which is going to let a lot of air in, and she has the ability to leave the door open on the front to let a lot of air in, I feel she's going to have pretty good ventilation in this coop. Um, that, the tall ceiling, will give her plenty of room to just, you know, get the moisture out and stuff. But I'm sure when it's 25 to 35 below in Minnesota, these birds will cause moisture and probably fog up or ice up the window inside. But, you know, hey, that's life in Minnesota. Um... I think right now she's got some um, ISA and uh, some golden comets and uh, barred rock over there. So she's got some good hardy winter birds, so should be good. Um, obviously, we're uh, kind of sad to see this project end and the next one start. Um, but it's quite the accomplishment to get done. Uh, I think my farmhand um, should be pretty proud that that she made it all the way through the project and succeeded in building a beautiful coop that'll look nice on her parents' homestead, and that'll serve her well. So here I am just kind of finishing up some wiring and trying to get that vent in. Getting that vent through the steel is a little bit of a challenge. I found the best way to do it is take a two-inch drill bit and run it backwards. Um, that seemed like the easiest method. We had to take off the, some of the gable trim and then put it back 
to get the vent in place, but um, it's a little bit of take it apart, fix it, put it back together because we weren't wanting to run the wires. That's why you see me um, lift up the roof edge there too. Hate to say it, but there's sometimes a little bit of put it on, don't like it, fix it, or redo. Um, I like to say the Smeltz family likes to do everything at least twice, sometimes three times to get it right. Wish that wasn't always the case, but sometimes that's the way you learn. I'm sure there's videos that, you know, people can comment on where I make mistakes or don't put things together quite right or the math didn't work out well. But for the most part, the videos are as accurate as I can make them, folks, and they're, they're as real as I can make them. Um, these videos don't have, um, don't have really any fluff in them. Um, I'm not a video producer. Just a guy that actually really started out uh, enjoying showing people, um, you know, uh, especially my clients, how to make, you know, great fish tanks. And I still like doing that for videos. And um, it just kind of progressed into, into showing people my life and how we do things. And I can tell you, it's really helped a lot of people. I hope a project like this um, helps out, you know, young kids. I hope, I hope this inspires a few people in this country to go out and, you know, take their neighbor kid or take their farmhand, their daughter or son, and build a coop with them. You know, maybe it's not a coop. Maybe it's a goat barn. Maybe it's a goat shed. Maybe it's a lean. Maybe it's a dog kennel. Uh, maybe it's a dog house. You know, maybe it's a cat tree. You know, but uh, don't just sit there on your days off and let your kids veg out in front of a computer screen and sit in the house and do what they want. You know, tell them to pack up and put on some old clothes and come on out and help. Yeah, even if they balk a little at times because they're tired and don't want to go out, it's still a good thing to do. There, I got the vent finally in place, folks, after taking apart the roof gable and the edging and, the, and redoing the wiring for some of the solar panel. We finally got it in place. Now it's just about kind of tweaking it out and kind of cleaning it up and making it presentable. I know, it's only a chicken coop. But again, I really want it to look nice for this family. This family's got really great kids. Um, they've helped us out a lot. Um, working around the farm, digging in a sewer, just all sorts of projects. And uh, it's a nice way to repay the family, too, is help out their daughter. I found that even with as many kids as we've had, which um, my bride and I have had six kids, um, you can always use a little help on the homestead and the farmstead. And having at least two, sometimes three, um, hired hands all summer long has been just a blessing. Um, the reason we can work in the weekdays right now is not really because of the COVID crap, but um, because um, um, she's one of the homeschool kids. So um, this can kind of be a project for her too. So that, that also helps. Um, we're not tied down to the secular system of the school day. But as you can see, it's nighttime here. The lights are on in the barn and we're finishing up. Final product, ready to roll. And again, you can see that green treated board on the back side, folks. It's going to be where we uh, attach the run to. I'm real excited to get this off the farm and get it placed. And here it is, folks. This is the final parting shot of it in place and in use. Appreciate you watching, folks. Please like and subscribe and support those channels. We show off the farm and the tanks and the reefs and everything we do in our life. Thank you again, folks.